Mustahab, which means preferred. Mustahab responses during the Lavate Quran. So a few weeks ago, we went through a presentation about prostration, that's sajda, during the Lavad. And it was explained that sometimes the topic being discussed in the Quran makes one feel like prostrating or going into sajda and praising Allah. And we also discussed that it was the sunnah of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and his companions to offer sajda at certain places during recitation or listening to the recitation of the Holy Quran. At the time, we were studying Surah Al-Alaq. So it was necessary to explain this information to you as Sajda Talaba comes at the end of this surah, as indicated by the arrow. In the same way, at times, the Holy Prophet وسلم, and his companions, may Allah be pleased with them, used to express their inner feelings on reading or listening to certain verses of the Holy Quran in actual words of prayer, according to whatever subject matter was there. This practice is still continued today by readers of the Holy Quran who follow the Sunnah, that means the practical example of the Holy Prophet So, a common response to Quranic prayers recited in the Holy Quran is Amin. And I'm sure you all know this, and I'm sure you've heard it before. So, for example, it is said after the last verse of Surah Al Fatiha, okay, whether we're reading the Quran or um, during Salat, Namaz. The full phrase is Amin Allahumma Amin, which means, O oh Allah, accept our prayers. There are also other places where specific responses are necessary. For example, after the name of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, which occurs but four times in the Holy Quran. So the Prophet Muhammad, Muhammadur Rasulullah, okay, we reply or respond with Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which means peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Okay, so whenever we recite the name of the Holy Prophet وسلم, we must say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And in fact, if any verse mentions God's messengers and prophets, we should give the response of peace be upon the messengers. And there are other responses too. For example, if a verse mentions God's forgiveness, we should reply, well, if it mentions God's forgiveness, we should reply with Allahumma ghfir lana, which is number four in front of you, which means, oh Allah, forgive us. Okay? In the same way, if a verse mentions um, Allah's infinite knowledge, we should reply with Rabbi zidni ilma, which is a prayer you all know because we recite it at the beginning of our Quran class, once a week at least, okay? which means, um, oh Allah, increase me in knowledge. Okay, and there are others as well, which you can see in front of you. There are also specific responses, which are given for specific verses in the Holy Quran. Some of them are in the list in front of you. For example, in Surah At-Teen, okay, which is chapter 95, which you recovered earlier in the course, the last verse, after the last verse, which is, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alay Sallahu Bi Ahkamil Hakimin. Is not Allah the best of judges? We should respond with, Bala wa ana ala dhalika Minash which means, yes, and I am among the witnesses to that. Okay. Again, Surah An-Nasr. Again, we covered this earlier in the course. It's chapter 105. Okay. In the last verse of Surah An-Nasr, 
فسبی بے ہم دے رب بے کا وسطر ان کان تو Glorify thy Lord with his praise and seek forgiveness of him. Surely he is oft returning with compassion. We should respond with Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika Allahumma ghfirli which means Holy are you, O Allah, with your praise. O Allah, forgive me. There are two more surahs, which we will now be studying this week and next week, with specific responses again. One is in Surah Al-Ala, which is chapter 87, and one is in Surah Al-Ghashiyah, which is chapter 88 of the Holy Quran. And both of these surahs are, specific, are quite um, important or significant because they are both recited in the Juma prayers and Eid prayers by our beloved Huzur, may Allah be his helping hand. So, Surah Al-A'la, which as I said is chapter 87, the Holy Prophet وسلم, used to recite this surah in the first rakat of the Eid prayer and the first rakat of the Friday prayer, the Juma prayer, as well as the first rakat of the Vita prayer. It's reported in a hadith in uh, Musnad Ahmad that the Holy Prophet وسلم, was very fond of this surah. He really liked this surah a lot. And so in accordance with the sunnah, the practice of the, of the Holy Prophet وسلم, our beloved Huzur, Hazrat Khalid Tunasid V, may Allah strengthen his hand, recites this surah in the first rakat of the Eid and Friday, that means Juma prayers. Okay? According to Hazrat Muslim anhu, in the second verse, we've been commanded to glorify the name of God It says, glorify the name of the Lord Most High. And who is the best way, or what is the best way for us to do this? The Holy Prophet وسلم, has told us that the best way to do this, or we can learn from him that the best way to do this is to say the following words. So in the Arabic, after we hear these words, that's the second verse of Surah Al-A'la. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim. Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Sabbihismi Rabbik Al-A'la. Glorify the name of thy Lord, the Most High. After we hear this, we should respond with, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, which means, Holy is my Lord, the Most High. The Holy Prophet وسلم, used to recite Surah Al-Ghashiya, during the second rakat of the Eid and Friday Jumma prayer. And after reciting the last verse of this surah, that's the verse 27 of this surah, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Thumma inna alayna hisabahum, then surely it is for us to call them to account. He would respond with, Allahumma hasibna hisaban yaseera which means O oh Allah bring me to account with leniency In the five volume English commentary of the Holy Quran it explains that Surah Al-Ghashiyah and Surah Al-A'la have a subject matter that deals with the collective life of the Muslim community at the time of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and also in the latter days when the promised Messiah وسلم, was to appear. This is why the Holy Prophet وسلم, generally used to recite these chapters in Juma and E prayers when the Muslim community was gathered together to pray. Therefore, it's our responsibility to learn these and other responses to specific verses within the Holy Quran in order to follow the sunnah of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and to show that we are grateful to Allah for blessing us with the Holy Quran, which is a guidance for all of us for all times. In order to find the responses in detail, you can look in the book, 
the hard copy of the Sino Quran on pages 203 and 204. And that will give you the full list, which I will also show you later in today's lesson, how, we can, how you can download that from the NQC website. Also, a lovely, beautiful book, um, which yourselves or your parents can download as well, is the book which is on the right, which is The Guiding Light. Now, this is a really good book to get hold of as it gives details of all the surahs that our beloved Huzur, may Allah be his helper, recites in the congregational prayers every day. That's every day, Fajr. And Isha throughout the week, those surahs are written in this book. So, I hope everybody's been listening carefully because we all know that now it is question time. Please put your hands up once you have seen the questions and if you can answer them. Okay, so if discipline in charge can get ready, I'm going to start the questions now. Number one, so what is the response recited after many prayers, including Surah Fatiha, Al Fatiha, in the Holy Quran? Uh, N6, uh, N8368. N8368. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, alhamdulillah. So, do you know what the prayer is or the, the um, response that's recited after the prayer? Is it Amin? Let's check. Allahumma Amin. Excellent. Well done. Allahumma Amin or Amin. Well done. Very good. Jazakumullah N8368. Well done. Okay, next question. What is the response recited after reading the name of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Holy Quran? Um, A7383. A7383. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. So do you know the answer to this question? Yes. Off you go. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which means peace of blessings of Allah be upon him. Excellent. Well done. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Well done. Excellent. Good. So, Jazakumullah. Thank you for your response. Next question. What should we respond with if a verse mentions God's forgiveness? Uh, N8380. N8380. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as Do you know the answer to this question? Um, no. Do you want to have a guess? Um, if there's a verse which mentions God's forgiveness, what would be a good way to respond to that? Okay, um, it's okay. It's, oh Allah, forgive us. So we're asking Allah to forgive us if we read a verse which mentions forgiveness. Okay, Jazakallah, thank you for trying. Okay, um, another student, please. Um, A7394. Three, nine, four. Excellent. What should we respond if a verse mentions God's infinite knowledge? If there's a verse which is speaking about God's infinite knowledge, what is a good response for us to give? A7394. Uh, I'm guessing their mic is not working. Okay. So we'll go to the next person. A7398. A7398. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Should we try somebody else? Yeah. Uh, let's try. Oh, I can hear somebody. Assalamu alaikum. Oh. Assalamu alaikum. Is that A7398? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Do you know the answer to this question? What should we respond if a verse mentions God's infinite knowledge? I think. Not Rabbi, sure. Rabbi Zidni. Good. Rabbi Zidni Ilma. Well oh. done. Oh Allah, increase me in knowledge. Well done. Excellent. Very good. Jazakumullah. Thank you for your help. Okay. So next question. How many surahs which are covered in our course so I've just spoken about the surahs which are covered in our course, have specific responses. Next student. You have another student, please. Discipline in charge. Discipline in charge, can we have another student, please? 
Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum salam. G. Uh, wait, what's your number? I am Finane. I'm still on. I'm still on. Oh, you're still unmuted. Okay, one second. I think there we've had a technical issue. Just a second. Um. Okay. Discipline in charge. You back in now? Let me have in charge here. Assalamu alaikum, do you want G2 in charge? Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Um, yeah, I was just about to say that um, she's lost access, so um, if you can just carry on um, choosing students at random. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Allah is. Okay, Allah is. Okay, can we have um, N, let's see. And please lower your hands if you've already had a go, okay? So we'll have N8408, um, just a second. N8408. Assalamu alaikum, N8408. Assalamu alaikum, N8408, can you hear me? N8408, can you hear me? Okay, we have N8390. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Is this N8390? Yes. Excellent. Do you know the answer to the next question? Um, how many surahs which are covered in our course have specific responses? I think one. Okay, let's check your answer. It's four. We just spoke about them just now. Surah at Teen, Surah al Nasr, Surah al Rashiya, and Surah al Ala. Okay, thank you for your effort. Thank you for trying. Okay, um, if we can now have um, N8406. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Next question, I haven't moved it over, sorry. What are the names of these surahs? I just repeated that again, so do you know the answer to this question? The four surahs in which... Um, surah Al-Fil, Surah Al-Nasr, and uh, sorry, I drifted off there. Okay, Surah Al-Ala, Surah Al-Rashiya, Surah al teen and Surah Al-Nasr. Those are the four surahs which we cover in our course, which have specific responses, okay? Thank you. Right. Okay. Mute. Right. If we can have next question, which is when is Surah Al Ala usually recited? When is it usually recited? We're going to have A7400. Just a second. A7400. Assalamualaikum. Assalam. Can you tell me the answer to this question? When is Surah Al Ala usually recited? Um, Eid, prayer, and Jummah. Um, which rakat? Um, first. Let's have a check. First rakat of Juma and Eid prayers. Excellent. Well done. Jazakumullah A7400. Well done. And please, if you've already answered a question, please do put your hands down so everybody else gets a chance as well. Next question. When is Surah al rashia usually recited? Surah al rashia So let's have um, A... Seven three nine six a seven three nine six. Everything's moving around. Just a second. A seven three nine six has disappeared. A seven four zero one one. A seven four one one. Assalamu alaikum, A7411. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Do you know the answer to this question? When is Surah Al Rashiya usually recited? Um, on Juma, the second rakat. Let's check your answer. Excellent, well done. Second rakat of Juma and Eid prayers. Well done. 
and our Jazak Mullah, thank you for your help. And our final thank you, question, bye. Is, final question, why are these two specific surahs recited? What is the reason? Why are these two specific surahs recited? Let's find somebody now. N8374. Just a second. All the hands are moving around, which is why the, it's difficult to get hold of one of you. N8374. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Can you answer this last question? Why are these two specific surahs recited? Yes. Um, is it because it was Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's favourite? Um, that he was very fond of them, but it wasn't so much it was his favourites, but he did used to recite them, which means it was a sunnah, a practice of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So good effort. You remembered it was something to do with the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So a very good try. Excellent. Jazakumullah everybody for all of your help and for all of your effort in trying to answer the questions.